Well, it's Tuesday. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're going to have our message of comfort and hope today. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. It was a great Sunday, Easter Sunday, to remember that Jesus is alive. And um, thanks particularly for bearing with us on Sunday night. We had a few issues with the video, but I think we got there in the end. If you haven't seen it, it is up on the YouTube channel to watch. Uh, so please have a look there. Well, you probably heard last night the hint uh, from the government that lockdown's going to be extended and they've set no real sort of time limit on how long it's going to go on for. Maybe that doesn't come as a surprise to you, but maybe you were hoping that it would end soon and you wish you could be out and everything back to normal. Well, it got me thinking of Joseph. Joseph was put in prison and he was in lockdown and through no fault of his own. He was falsely accused of something uh, that he hadn't done and he had to go to prison. And he hoped he was going to get out. But it ended up he had to spend a whole extra two years in prison. So we're going to read. It's just the end of Genesis 39. We're going to read a little bit about what happened to Joseph. We're going to pray and then we're going to look at the encouragement and comfort that Jesus can bring us through his life. But while Joseph was in there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness. Father, we pray, please, that you would speak to us today and just bring us comfort and help through Jesus for your glory's sake we ask. Amen. So Joseph was in prison. And what's the first thing the Holy Spirit wants to draw our attention to? The first thing that we're told, while Joseph was in there in the prison, the Lord was with him. Jesus was with him in that prison. During his time of lockdown, Jesus was right there with him. What an amazing comfort. He wasn't on his own, even though he's away from his dad, away from his brothers, away from all the people that he loved, and away from all the familiar stuff. He was in lockdown in this tiny little cell. He was not alone. Jesus was there with him. The Holy Spirit wants us to see that, that the Lord was there with him, and not only that, he showed him kindness even while he was in prison. And what an encouragement for us that Jesus isn't different with us. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Wherever you find yourself as a Christian today, whether you feel locked in your own house, your own home, could be away from your family, those you're familiar with, such different strange times, remember Jesus says at the end of Matthew, Surely I am there with you always until the very end of the age. What a comfort for anyone who knows Jesus that no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, no matter what situation you find yourself in, that Jesus is with you. Remember in Hebrews it says, Never will I leave you and never will will I forsake you. Jesus is with you today in the middle of this lockdown and that is the best comfort you could ever hope for. The one who made you, the one who knitted you together inside your mother's womb, the one who's loved you all your life, the one who's arranged every event of your life so you get to know him, the one who's died for your sins and risen again, who lives to intercede for you, the one who has your life in his hands he is with you now. What a great hope and what a great comfort. Really take comfort in that in the middle of this lockdown, that Jesus is with you. Psalm 27 says, Even though my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Even if everyone else has left you, Jesus says, I will never do that. I will. I'm with you. So that's the first thing. The second thing, because Jesus was with Joseph, he saw him do amazing things. 
prison stopped Joseph from doing so much. He used to be free in Potiphar's house. He used to be free to go out and work. He used to be free to serve. All those other amazing things that he was doing for Potiphar. Now he was just stuck in a tiny little cell in a dungeon. Stuck there in lockdown. But it didn't stop Jesus from working. It stopped Joseph in one way, but it didn't stop Jesus. Jesus was able to carry on working and do amazing things, even when Joseph was in prison. Even though he was on lockdown, it didn't trap Jesus. And we can see Jesus working in an amazing way. The first person we're introduced to in the prison is the warden, the guy who's in charge of the whole prison. And when he's introduced to Joseph... He soon sees that Jesus is with Joseph. Joseph is different to the other prisoners. He's not despairing. He's not down. He's not sulking. He's not angry or cross. Yes, he longs to get out. But he's content because Jesus is with him. And this prison warden gives everything in the prison over to G- to Joseph to be in charge of. And he doesn't have to worry anymore about anything. Because there's this guy there, Joseph, who knows Jesus and God is with him. And this is an amazing thing. So Jesus is at work, still giving Joseph work to do. It's different to before, very different. Now he's stuck in prison, but Jesus provides this amazing opportunity. And as he faithfully carries out his work, suddenly we find these next two characters this cupbearer and this chief baker to the king, to Pharaoh, they are brought into the prison where Joseph is. Who did that? Only God can do something like that. So prison limited Joseph. It did not limit Jesus. Jesus brings these two guys in. That Pharaoh gets angry with them for whatever reason, but Jesus is behind it all. And Jesus gathers these two guys to be with Joseph, they start having really troubling, odd dreams about their future. And there we are. Jesus has placed someone in this prison, in this weird, strange time and place, the exactly the right person to be able to tell them the meaning of their dreams. So Joseph has exactly the right gifts from Jesus that are needed. And even though it might not be the people he's normally with or normally speaks to, now he has this incredible opportunity to show them the wisdom of Jesus in their lives. One is going to go on to live, one is going to go on to die. But Joseph can preach the good news of Jesus to them. He's able to speak with Jesus' wisdom. And what an encouragement for you, for us as a church. You might be with totally different people today in this lockdown than what you're used to be in. You're in a completely different situation and yet it does not stop Jesus from working. Think about the gifts he's given you. Think about the people he's put in lockdown with you. Maybe you don't normally speak to your neighbours and you're having more opportunities than ever to speak to them. What is it that Jesus has given you that you can speak? He's given you his wisdom about the future, about the judgment to come. He's given you good news to give them about forgiveness for sin, about eternal life by trusting in Jesus. Maybe you wouldn't have normally had this opportunity, but lots of our neighbours are saying people are chatting over the fence more than ever before. People are going out for walks and stopping and chatting to people they wouldn't normally see. Think about the people that Jesus is bringing you into contact with during this lockdown. There is the work he's given you. They are the people that he wants you to speak to right now. And he can equip you and help you to speak words of life to them. So it might shut you down in a way that's different to normal, but it does not stop Jesus from working. He can go anywhere, at any time, melt king's hearts, bring prisoners in, whatever it might be. Whoever he wants you to speak to, he can bring along. So see, try and see his hand. Pray that you'd see God's hand at work in all the different people that you're meeting. Don't just sulk. 
Don't just try and bury your head and say, oh, just get through this time. Really use this time that Jesus has given you to be fruitful. Joseph looked at those guys and he's like, why are your faces so downcast? Should have been Joseph who was bitter, but he wasn't. He was positive. He was upbeat. Not just because he had this positive mental attitude or he was naturally more cheerful, but because he could see Jesus was at work. It was by faith, by trusting in Jesus, he was able to be fruitful even in the most miserable of prisons. So that's the second thing. This time does not stop Jesus from working. Be encouraged. The third thing is this, that uh, Jesus was planting seeds for something greater in the future. But Joseph had to learn to be patient. Once Joseph told the cupbearer and the baker the meaning of their dreams, he also said to the cupbearer, he said, remember the kindness I've shown to you. When you get out, when Pharaoh does restore you, remember me. Tell Pharaoh about me. Remember the kindness you've had from me and tell Pharaoh so I can get out of here because I've been falsely in prison. So Joseph says, oh, surely this is nearly time up. Surely this is nearly freedom time again. Surely this is time to get out and, and do more useful things. But as soon as the cupbearer got out and got his freedom, he forgot all about Joseph and the help that he'd known through Joseph from Jesus. He forgot it all, just forgot until a later time. Can you imagine what a huge blow that was for Joseph? And we're told he had to spend another two full years in lockdown. Imagine if that was the announcement on TV this week. We, we wouldn't know what to do, would we? Joseph, another two full years in prison. God was working now behind the scenes, underneath the surface. Jesus was preparing even greater fruitfulness than what Joseph had seen with the prison warden, the cupbearer and the baker. But he had to learn to be patient and wait for Jesus to complete that work and carry on that work. And he had to learn to be patient and wait for God's time. Two more years, I couldn't stand it in lockdown. You might think, two more years. But we can still learn something really important. That sometimes Jesus is at work visibly. Sometimes he's at work underneath the surface, behind the scenes. Because he's going to do something else that's even more amazing. And we need to learn to trust him and to be patient. So pray for help in that. Perhaps you've heard some amazing ways that Jesus is at work and there are loads and loads and we'll be able to share them properly when we get back to church, when we come together. One was uh, some Italian doctors um, were working in hospital. They were all atheists and this Italian pastor who was 75 came in really sick with the coronavirus but he brought his Bible in with him. And before this, the scientists were saying, science has all the answers. But as they treated this man and they heard the wisdom that he spoke about, you know, about Jesus with to them, they started to change. And in the end, this pastor, sadly, in one way for his family, but in a great way for him, he died and went to be with Jesus. They changed. They turned to follow Jesus and they said, actually, Jesus has all the answers. Now, that Christian pastor in Italy had to be so patient in his suffering. Perhaps he didn't understand what Jesus was doing. Perhaps he didn't get to see the fruit of his words. But God was working behind the scenes, underneath the surface, in those doctors' hearts and brought about something amazing. I've told the story of uh, a little girl before as well, just to encourage the children. There was this little girl and she was dying with this terrible illness. And her pastor went to visit her one day and he said to her, how can I help you? How can I pray for you? And this little girl said, pastor, I feel so useless now. I feel so rubbish. I used to be able to come to church, but now I've got this illness. I know I'm going to die. I just feel trapped in my bed. I can't come and speak. 
I can't come and sing, I can't see any of my friends, I'm just locked down, I can't do anything. And the pastor was really thinking about, what, what do I say to this poor little girl? And in the end, Jesus gave him wisdom and he said, why don't you start to pray for all of your friends and family who don't know Jesus, all your neighbours, anyone that comes to mind, why don't you just start to pray? Because you might be trapped here in your bed, but Jesus is not. He can hear your cries and he can save people. He can go into their homes. He can speak to them. He can convict them. He can save them. And this little girl's eyes lit up and she said, Thank you, Pastor. That is exactly what I'm going to do. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me your wisdom. And so she, she, she started to pray. The pastor went away and sort of had forgotten. And then the next week, this new couple turned up in church. And he'd forgotten about this little girl. And they turned up in church and they trusted in Jesus and were saved. They became Christians. And he said for the next few months, all these weird things started happening. People who used to come to church started coming back. Some of the, the strangest people you'd never think to see in church started turning up and becoming Christians and trusting in Jesus. And he started to really get puzzled about this. It was amazing. But he said, what? what's going on? And then a few months later, this little girl went to be with Jesus Jesus took her home to heaven to live with him forever. And it was only then that it suddenly clicked in the pastor's mind. Underneath her pillow, he found this old bit of paper, really worn out, folds and creased and tearing. And on that bit of paper were written all the names of the people that had been saved had started coming to church and had turned to Jesus in his church. You see, that little girl was trapped in her bed, maybe in a worse situation than some of us, but she learned that God could still work behind the scenes. She never got to enjoy all these people turning to Jesus because she was in her bed. She never got to see the fruit of it. To her, Jesus was working under the surface and she just had to trust him and carry on praying no matter how bad she felt, no matter how hard it was. But look at what Jesus brought about through that little girl's life, through crying to him and trusting in him. And you can be the same. But we need to learn to be patient and trust God and see what he will do. Remember what we're told about Job? To learn from his patience and see what God finally brought about. Well, what did God finally bring about for Joseph and for the whole of Egypt and for the whole of the rest of the church? It was incredible. It was worth the wait in prison for Joseph. However many years he spent there. It all melted away. It was worth the wait. It was worth trusting in Jesus. Suddenly, as he was let free, it was worth all of it. What happened? The most powerful man in the world, Pharaoh, started having all these dreams about the future. These troubling dreams of famine and plenty. And God sent those dreams to Pharaoh. The cupbearer suddenly remembered at just the right time, funnily enough, as Jesus prompted him, that Joseph was there in prison. Jesus had equipped Joseph exactly for this situation. The time was right. God's time had arrived. His hour had come. And Joseph was able to interpret the dreams. And what happened? He was able to store up all this grain with Jesus' help. And thousands of lives were saved. Also, his own brothers who hated him before all this, Jesus was working quietly under the surface. They ended up coming to get food from Egypt. And there was this amazing reconciliation in the church. Christians who'd fallen out before and treated each other terribly became the best of friends. And they lived with each other and they loved each other in this new land. And they got provided for and their lives were saved. And there was tears of joy and there was repentance and forgiveness and life and fruitfulness. And the whole of Egypt, this whole land that wasn't a Christian country, was affected by Jesus pouring out his spirit through that suffering in prison. God did it 
for the saving of many lives. Pray that during this time we'd fix our eyes on the hope that God is at work and that Jesus can bring about something incredible in his time through this terrible suffering, that he can work it all for good and that's what he wants to do. So be encouraged. Jesus is with you in lockdown in prison. Prison cannot stop Jesus from working. He continues to be at work. Pray that he'd help us to be patient, whether we see him at work or not. And then pray that Jesus would bring about incredible things. Families restored back together. Churches knowing times of revival. Non-Christian countries turning to Jesus through this. Pray like never before. And realise that our Saviour is almighty, all-powerful, and that he can do great things.